In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make hookless rope lures and flies that you can use to catch gar. Gar have notoriously bony mouths, which make it extremely difficult to hook them in the mouth with bait hooks and traditional lures and flies unless they are given sufficient time to swallow the bait. That's where the hookless rope lures come in. As the name implies, there is no hook. The idea behind the hookless rope lure is to get the rope tangled up inside the gar's very toothy mouth. First, I'm going to show you how you can melt nylon rope around a hook to make a rope lure. First, find yourself some nylon rope. For most of my lures, I will use about one third of this rope. I measure my rope lures four to six inches. When I've measured them, I will tie a knot at the appropriate mark. I encourage you to experiment with the length. I have seen other anglers use rope lures as long as nine or ten inches. Next. Cut the rope just in front of the knot. Ensure the knot is very tight so it does not come undone. When the rope is cut, completely unravel the braid. Smacking the braid against your hand or against the side of a table can help unravel the braid quickly. Next is melting the nylon rope. I'll be using a panfish hook, a weighted jig head, and a spinner bait. Take the hook and stick the barb in the back of the knot. With the panfish hook, you don't necessarily have to stick the barb in the back of the knot. Instead, you can weasel the eye and the shank through the knot until it sticks out the front. Do the same thing with the weighted jig head and the spinner bait. Next, take a lighter and put a flame to the knot until the knot is completely melted around the hook so that the hook is not going anywhere. This particular fly doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, which makes it a great fly and something I always have when fly fishing for gar. Do the same thing with the weighted jig head. When melting these nylon ropes, I highly recommend when you're done melting the rope, run it under a faucet or dip it in a cup of water to cool off the knot. The nice thing about using these weighted jig head rope lures is how quickly they sink in the water column. If the gar are down on the water column, this weighted jig head should sink down to their level rather effectively. Another nice thing about using a jig head is how you can add a spinner to your lure for extra flash. With the spinner bait, you can either take the skirt off or leave it on. If you leave it on, be sure to hold it back as you're melting your nylon. Next is the barrel swivel rope lure or fly. Measure your nylon rope twice the length of what you would for your other lures. I measured the rope to 10 inches so the lure will be 5 inches long. After you've measured it, cut it at the length that you want. The amount of rope you need for this lure is all dependent on the size of the barrel swivel you selected. For this video, I selected a size 7 barrel swivel and determined 4 strands of nylon rope is what I needed to fill out the lure. Thread each strand of nylon through one end of the barrel swivel to the halfway point. It's helpful to wet one end of the nylon so you can thread it through the barrel swivel. Similar to the lure I mentioned earlier, this is a very light lure and great for fly fishing. When you finish threading your nylon, take a zip tie and tighten it around the nylon at the base of the swivel. Make sure the zip tie is snugly secured. When the zip tie is in place, clip off the excess. Take your lighter again and carefully melt the nylon around the barrel swivel in front of the zip tie. Next I'm going to show you how you can tie rope flies, but before I begin, I recommend you use flat wax nylon thread to make these flies. It's a tough and durable thread and does not break easily. I'm going to start with the weighted jig head lure. Begin building a thread base along the hook shank. When you've built your thread base, begin adding two or three strands of nylon rope at a time. 
Use very tight securing wraps when holding the nylon rope to the shank. The nylon rope should be staying in place and not spinning around the hook shank. When you're satisfied with how much rope you have on your lure, whip finish and apply head cement. For this video, I'm using Zapagap. When the glue is dried, clip off the barb and point of the hook at the bend. You don't have to clip off this part of the hook. You can choose to leave it on. I choose to clip it off because it seems while I'm fishing it will cause the nylon rope to become a tangled mess. For this next lure I will be using a bait holder as the hook. I like using bait holders for these rope lures because of the barbs on the shank. Just as the barbs help hold the bait fish on the hook, the barbs will help hold the nylon rope in place. Repeat the steps I did with the weighted jig headed lure by creating a thread base and adding 2-3 to three strands of nylon rope at a time. When you've added enough rope, tie it all together. It doesn't have to look pretty. The important thing is that it stays together. When it's done, whip finish, apply cement, and clip off the tip and barb. Next is the inline spinner. Since inline spinners come with treble hooks, I recommend clipping off two sides of the treble hook and using the third in the fly vise. Like the lures before it, build a thread base and add as much nylon rope as you need, two to three strands at a time. When you've added the amount of nylon rope that you want, tie it all together, whip finish, apply cement, and clip off the third side of the treble hook. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up and check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.